Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And now to our first major conversation. Former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Professor Chukuma Charles Soludo, was yesterday sworn in as governor of Anambra State in southern Nigeria. We shall be brought under my consideration. Any matter we has been brought under my consideration. Or shall become known to me as governor of Anambra State. Or shall become known to me as governor of Anambra State. Except as may be required for the due discharge of my duties. Except as may be required for the due discharge of my duties. As Fifth democratically elected governor of Anambra State. Before him, we have Dr. Chimwoke Mbadineju. After him, uh, we had Dr. Chris Ngege. After Dr. Chris Ngege, there was uh, Mr. Peter uh, Ubi. And then very briefly, for about three months, we had uh, Mrs. Veggie Etiaba. And then, of course, the two-time governor, who is now outgoing, Mr. Willie Obia. In what was billed as a low-key ceremony for only about 50 guests, it had former governor of the state, Peter Obi, economist Professor Pat Utomi, and a former chairman of the All Progressive's Grand Alliance, Victor Ome, among other dignitaries at the event. In his inaugural address, the governor enumerated the challenges facing the state, such as touting, illegal collection of taxes, levies, and insecurity. Now, while promising to flush out the touts, Solodo announced to a one-month tax holiday for residents of the state while saying that he would sign an executive order to ban all illegal revenue collectors in the state. Now, on the issue of the indigenous people of Biafra and the Eastern Security Network, he promised to dialogue with them in resolving the group's agitation while saying, quote, there is nothing that dialogue cannot solve, end of quote. Now, Solodo was driven to the venue in an innocent sports utility vehicle, keeping his earlier promise to use the Nigerian car brand a further promise in his speech to transform Anambra State and make it a livable, livable place for everybody. The ceremony was not without, however, without uh, drama as two prominent women in the state, uh, Mrs. Abele Chuku Obiano, wife of the immediate past governor, Willie Obiano, and uh, Mrs. Bianca Ojuku, widow of Chukwe Mecca Odimegu Ojuku, former military governor of eastern Nigeria and uh, leader of the Breakaway Republic of Biafra, engaged in a fiscal exchange that marred the occasion. Now, the two had been had to be separated by security operatives and party loyalists. Also, Governor Solodo immediately hit the ground running yesterday after being sworn in by retaining Professor Solo Chuku Lobelu as the secretary to the state government. He is a SSG from the Obiano administration. He also announced the appointment of Dr. Chuku Diokoli as the accountant general and Chinedu Umoye as the deputy chief of staff and chief of protocol now what is the task ahead of the new governor joining us to discuss this is uh, dr Kach onunuju who is a political analyst uh, but before we come to our guests let's listen uh, to what uh, professor charles soldo said after being sworn in i insisted i insisted that this event must not cost the government of anambra one kobo and it has not even the little refreshment that we'll have here, the canopies as well, they are all paid personally. It will not cost our number one cobble to do this. I would rather use such resources, if it's available, to lay the foundation stone for a public hospital at Oboko or elsewhere, or empower our security agencies to fight criminality. Today, I come with a sober heart, conscious of the enormity of responsibilities on our shoulders and the challenges ahead. Yes, there will be time to celebrate. We will celebrate when security of life and property is guaranteed and law and order is restored. When every child of schooling age is in school, when every school child is receiving the 21st century education for the digital age. We will celebrate when everyone, especially children and women, can access quality health care, where the cost of doing business is down to near zero. Our roads are tired and we have an efficient transportation system with no one having to wait in traffic for more than a few minutes. Until we have access to 24-hour electricity and our streets are clean and green, our cities, communities, and markets are planned and clean, the many millions of Chalimwamba force and the vulnerable persons are lifted up to realize their God-given potential. And all our pensioners receive their gratuities and workers are paid their leave allowances and contractors paid 
we will not celebrate. Until our youths get jobs and business opportunities, until the youth in Oboko Zone 9 become global serial entrepreneurs, we will not celebrate. Poverty, until poverty and income levels rising. Yes, I will not celebrate, and certainly not with the taxpayers' money. Very interesting uh, uh, points from uh, the new governor. Um, Dr. Onuriju, um, are, you, are you confident that um, this will be, there will be rainfall after this, uh, this thunder? Um, bearing in mind, we've had a lot of promise in the past from not a few politicians who have promised so much but delivered so little. Will this be a different case, in your opinion? Yes. I, I, I want to be this optimistic. I was very excited about the plus he gave for the Nigerian economy by using the Nigerian-made vehicle made by uh, innocent artificial vehicle. And if you check, you will see that this is not normal with our government for the past 20 years. This is the first time somebody who was sworn to the Constitution has actually behaved in loyalty to the constitution no other government no matter what they said what he did yesterday in using the made in nigeria vehicle simply shows you that what we've had it's a lot of men who are honestly not committed to the nigerian project again a lot of them do not know about equity they do not know about justice or fairness they don't know about the country all they are thinking about right now is ethnicity, religion. Nobody has done for Nigeria like Sununu did yesterday by using a made in Nigerian bank. For me, in all that happened yesterday, that was my biggest takeaway. That somebody has come to wake us up, to tell us that our conscience should prick us. Why are we not helping Nigerian businesses? Why are we buying people cars from our side? Why are we patronizing? international and foreign made goods when we are not yet ready to patronize nigerian made goods and when he made that statement yesterday i forgot everything i saw about him and then told myself i think this is the most important thing i saw yesterday i saw the made in nigerian car bring him to the swearing ceremony i saw the made in nigerian car take him away from the ceremony grounds to elsewhere and I just was telling myself what will happen across Nigeria when every chief executive and those appointed and also in executive branch start embracing me yeah, yeah. in Nigeria. Dr. Oluju, interesting. You, 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 seem, you seem really uh, uh, impressed with his speech and his uh, actions on his inaugural day. But let's not forget, I belong to everybody and I belong to nobody. We're moving the command and control center of our security apparatus to the northeast. I mean, I, you, I'm sure you remember how you felt and how a lot of people felt at no, that time. No, no, no. We've had a lot of promise. Politicians have said so many things, but it's not about what you say. It's about what you do. Are we getting too excited too soon? That's why I'm telling you, I belong to everybody, I belong to nobody. It was just rhetoric from somebody who we found that to be fundamentally dishonest. But this, the use of the made in Nigerian vehicle was not rhetoric, it was action. He was actually doing it. He wrote there in the made in Nigerian vehicle. And I was telling myself, the kind of reverberation this will have for the Nigerian economy, should we have those people in government offices and elected persons resorts to embracing nigeria first nobody has done it this way before never mind the rhetoric i belong to everybody i belong to nobody i was just a fraudulent rhetoric and the man never acted i want to follow actions i don't want to follow the rhetoric from politicians no i want to see actions and the action i saw yesterday in the governor being driven there with the Medi nigerian car and taking out there with the Medi nigerian car i simply pray that he now pressurizes the rank and file of his executive, and then by inference, uh, forcing the legislative branch to also embrace made in Nigeria. Do you also see his shirt? He was wearing a made in Nigeria shirt. So these things are things that I believe make a lot of sense. I want to watch actions, not returns. All right, um, Dr. Katrin Nunuju.
Looking at his speech yeah. yesterday, he, he talked about the fact that uh, Anambarians will not be celebrating until lives and properties are protected and you have everyone having a good life, health, access to health facilities, among others. Now, one of the issues uh, that was also mentioned and credited to him is the fact that in addressing security, which we understand the security dynamics in the, south, um, uh, in the southeastern region, he talked about having a dialogue with the IPOP, the ESN, and of course, MASOP. Now, do you see the strategy working? Do you see the strategy working? Well, he spoke to the security needs of the region, but then he knows that for the security problem to go away, you need to talk to the federal government. Because I believe the cascade of violence across the country are purposely, intentionally instrumented by the Buhari administration. So if you have an administration that forces soldiers to stay hands when soldiers are killed, to stay hands when aircraft, our fighter Alpha Jet is shot down in Zamfara, to stay hands when people go to farms and damage farm products, to stay hands when Nigerians are living in IDP camps, even though we're not at war, then you should understand. Yes, he was talking about a number, no, but that was an honest metaphor for the entire country. It is a country where we have now seen somebody who, due to ethnicity, has decided to allow the country bomb. And that, I speak about the Buhari administration. You can say how the country has fallen apart. No fuel, no flights, no electricity. And where is Buhari? Buhari is in London. So that's why, you know, it's it, it reminiscent of the saying that they say that uh, a king was fiddling while Rome was born in. But, but let's also look at, just before we move away also, I mean, we also need to understand the fact that you have IPOP, and we know what the agitation of IPOP is, asking that, uh, you know, they want uh, sovereignty. And